Hello and welcome to Clarion News Dex. We are reaching you live from Nigeria's capital city, Abuja. First, the headlines. Finally, Central Bank of Nigerians Governor bows as he appears before the House of Representatives over the new Naira Notes extension. Wonders they say shall never end as an Islamic state of West African province, Iswap, shares old notes to commuters in Baruno State. The European Mission launches observation mission ahead of the 2023 general elections. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Mefeli, has finally appeared before the House of Representatives which summoned him over the confusion caused by the redesign of some Naira notes and exchange of old Naira notes with new ones. Mefeli is appearing before the adult committee set up by the House to investigate the crisis which is chaired by Majority Leader Lahassan Adodogua, Speaker of the House Femi Bajabi Amina was to issue an warrant for Emefele's arrest over his repeated failures to answer at least four summons from the House. The House had shelved its plan to go on break for the presidential and national assembly elections, which was to commence on Thursday over the CBN's governor's failure to answer the last summon issued to him by the committee. Bajabi Amila had threatened to mandate Inspector General of Police Usman Baba to arrest and force his appearance before the panel. Insisting that the deadline breached the provision for Section 20, Subsection 3 of the CBN Act. Members of the Islamic State of West African Province, Iswab, reportedly shared old Naira notes with commuters in Baruno State ahead of the Central Bank of Nigeria's cashless policy deadline. Members of the terrorist group were seen distributing money to passengers along the Medjugorje Mongono Highway in Gazamala local government area of Baruno State. According to a local, the swap members were standing under a tree by the roadside with a bag of old Naira notes. The terrorists gave each person 100,000 in old Naira notes. According to other source, the insurgents urged them to take the money to the bank and exchange it for new notes, praying that Allah makes it beneficial to them. Reactions have continued to trail the new date announced for changing of the old Naira notes to the new ones till February 10th. 2023. In this report, Clevy News and Mofono Kone visited some point of sales centers in Abuja Metropolis where she filled in this report. According to the Central Bank of Nigerians Governor, Godwin Emefile, Nigerians will still be able to deposit their old notes directly with the CBN until February 17, 2023, described as Chris period. This, he said, it is in compliance with sections 20, subsection 3, and 22 of the CBN Act. This new approval has been created with pressure from many Nigerians and groups as the cash seems not to be available anywhere. Reacting to the new extension, some POS attendants said if urgent measures are not taken, their business will soon collapse as they can no longer get cash for their businesses. Because of I needed money to do this POS business, that's why I went to bank. And when I went to bank, they are just giving 20,000 Naira. So I'm saying that cannot help me in this, my business of a thing. So what do 20,000 do for me? So I have to look at the time I'm coming. I'm supposed to have been here since eight o'clock. It's impaired my business because there's nowhere to see cash. If you, when you enter a bank, they will tell you only deposit, no withdrawal. Then people used to come, they want cash, they want cash. So you have to go to market. We'll gather the cash for the business people, then we'll pay them, then they give us the cash. Then we'll distribute the cash to the people. So people are suffer. Me too, like, no, I don't have anything. I don't have even 200 naira. I'm empty pocket. So I want to maybe somebody want to deposit money. It has destroyed the POS business entirely. You go to the bank, that the POS, CBM place an order. Uh, there will be no payment of cash through the counter. Uh, the only means we can get cash is to go to ATM. Then the ATM, go there, there is a lot of queue. The end users are not left out as they lament scarcity of funds in all the paying centers, hoping that 
the new extension date will yield positive results. I've said the first one there, the second one there, two over there. I guess that's four. No cash. And I don't think the, ATM has, the ATMs are working. Too. It's really crazy. All the POFs don't have cash. We don't have anything. And I don't know. And the, even the banks said they don't have the new NERA notes. So we don't know what's going on. Hopefully the government can figure out something. I don't know why they changed. What's the essence of the new note they changed? Self? What's the, is it to increase the value of the NERA or what? I don't know. The extension to me, still, it will still be the same. When the time, because people still using old money now. And uh, the CBN should make sure that the new money, new currency is available. We, I don't even know what is happening in this country. You know that we don't have the new money. And you, they are making it compulsory for us to be using the new money, which, which we don't even have. Are we going to spend what we don't have? It's where I'll let them give at least three months. At least three months, my daughter. At least three months, my daughter. Not to kill Nigeria like this. It's not good. We are working like this. Somebody look at me. Somebody like me be begging somebody to take a job. Me? Well, the situation is really not improving anyway. Actually, because we are still experiencing the difficulty in getting. With all indications, Nigerians have until February 17 to do the needful by ensuring the old naira notes are out of circulation. Imefonokun reporting for Clevio News. The European Union has officially launched its observation mission ahead of the 2023 general elections. In a press conference in Abuja, the chief observer of the European Union election observation mission, Barry Andrews, highlighted the aims and objectives as he calls on all parties involved to be peaceful during and after the election. Five days to the general elections. Preparations remains on top gear and that's why the European Union launched its observation team to monitor the electioneering process. The chief observer of the European Union election observation mission to Nigeria, Barry Andrews, used the occasion to roll out the mission's core objectives. First, of course, is to contribute in some way to deepening the roots of Nigerian democracy. And uh, it's no secret that we live in an age globally when democracy is under attack. In democracy is a retreat. Some people have described it as a democratic recession. And so, the our team is I am the chief observer, uh, Thomas is the deputy chief observer, and we have 11 in our core team, and they have been here since January the 11th. And we have, for example, um, election analysts, we have media experts, we have uh, political analysts, legal analysts, um, social media analysts, media. Uh, and, and, and mainstream media, of course, and together uh, we have uh, a really excellent team of experts and they have been here since January the 11th. Just yesterday we deployed uh, 40 long-term observers uh, from 20 teams of two across Nigeria, across covering all of the 36 states in the federal territory and we will rely on their observations their input and the data that they're able to assemble and all of the meetings and stakeholders that they engage in uh, in order to allow us to prepare uh, uh, and to complete the work that we're carrying out at the moment. The EU also wants all political players to play by the rules by maintaining law and order during and after the polls. And then on election day itself, uh, we will be visiting polling stations, we will be examining access to polling stations, we will be looking at technology and all of the issues associated with uh, election day itself. And that will help us to conclude a preliminary statement, which will be uh, issued two days after the election, that is on Monday, 27th February, and we will hold another press conference like this uh, to launch a preliminary statement. And it is on that occasion that we will, uh, we will carry out that final assessment, the final assessment, that we will carry out an assessment as to the Civility, the transparency, and the credibility of the election. Uh, uh, after that, we will continue our work here through the May uh, March 11th elections and to complete our work in the final report uh, a few weeks later. So, this is a long process, not just about election day. Uh, it is a very uh, deep commitment by the European Union to, uh, to this work. The EU election observation mission operates under a separate and distinct mandate from the EU delegation in Nigeria. 
and it is independent in its findings from EU member states and all EU institutions. The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, has urged the leadership of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, the National Association of Road Transport Owners, NATO, and the General Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, MUEN, to ensure that their members who will be deployed in the movement of sensitive and non-sensitive materials are insulated from partisan politics. Yakubu gave the advice on Tuesday in Abuja at the third signing of the Memorandum of Understanding between INEC and the leadership of the three relevant unions. The MOU was designed to facilitate the successful deployment of personnel and materials for the 2023 general elections to INEC state offices in 774 local government areas of the country. INEC chairman who shares concerns about the fuel situation in the country and its impact on transportation on election day said arrangements will be made as he will meet with the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited NNPCL to look into ways to ameliorate the situation. I am glad to note that this meeting seeks to achieve two objectives. The first is to put finishing touches to the implementation of a memorandum of understanding signed between the Commission and the unions about two months ago. Secondly, to conclude on the modalities for the certification of vehicles by the Federal Road Safety Corps in the light of the emphasis we place on the safety of election personnel and materials. The time has come to stop all excuses and provide effective logistics to ensure heat free arrangement for the 2023 general elections. President NURTW Tajuddin Ibukule Barua, with other ESCO present, however, pledged to ensure a smooth service delivery as they will not let the Commission down. We want our members to know the importance of this MOU that we signed. Where we will invite them is to hear and know the importance of MOU that we signed with INEC. And I'm sure assuring the national chairman of INEC today that by the grace of God, we are going to discharge this duty as he gives us. And I always promise you, by the grace of God and support of our members, across states who will not disappoint and give us. INEC and also and you are the W, the other unions present on the road safety, have done their very best to ensure a peaceful, free and fair election 2023 on the basis of the 2022 Electoral Act. So with that being said, FES is feeling very privileged indeed and has to commend all the stakeholders once again for enabling us to be the co-host of such a momentous occasion. With the election fast approaching, the Commission is ensuring it's ready to deliver a free, fair and credible elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has again reiterated its commitment to declare the election results as announced swiftly. The Chairman of the Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, made this known during a courtesy visit by the International Foundation for Electoral System, IFES, to the Commission headquarters in Abuja. The Independent National Electoral Commission Chairman, Professor Mohamud Yakubu, said, the meeting is coming at a very critical time. Nigerians are going to the polls to elect their leader for another four years. Most warmly to the Independent National Electoral Commission. And you are coming truly at a very auspicious time just under, uh, just a little over three weeks to the seventh general election in Nigeria since the restoration of democracy in 1999. It's historic. And for us also in the commission, having released the timetable for the election in February last year, and having identified 14 activities uh, this meeting is holding um, today, when we are implementing the 12th activity, the publication of the notice of poll, 
meaning that we have so far successfully implemented 12 out of the 14 activities on schedule. So there are only two activities outstanding. The first one um, is the um, end of campaign by political parties, which by law is 24 hours uh, before polling day, which is going to be on the 23rd of February for the presidential election and 11th March for the state election, governorship and state assembly. And then the election day proper, which is on the 25th of February for the presidential and national assembly and the 11th of March for the state elections. Speaking, President of the International Foundation for Electoral System, IFRS, Mr. Anthony Bamburi, believes the outcome of the elections will impact the struggle for democracy in the African continent and the world. Nigeria's leadership in Africa and indeed around the world is an inspiration to people in uh, consolidated and struggling democracies around the world. Uh, what happens in this country impacts struggles for democracy uh, throughout the continent and indeed I would say every region of the world. In 2023, the work of the INEC and the actions of the voters of Nigeria will constitute the most significant election anywhere in the world this year. Uh, IFAS, the International will be able to support the INEC in the fulfillment of your tremendously important responsibilities. IFS has been working in Nigeria and supporting INEC efforts since the return of democracy in 1999. A non-governmental organization do the right thing for the less privileged and youth foundation has continued its sensitization campaign across Nigeria with a simple message for the people to do the right thing even when no one is watching the report. From schools to markets, from the north to south, this non-governmental organization, Do the Right Thing for the Less Privileged and Youth Foundation, aims to transverse the nook and crannies of the country to plead with the consciousness of individuals as they insist that if people are constantly reminded to do the right things, it will sooner or later become a part of them. This time, the organization takes its visit to the southwestern part of the country. The location is Alade Market, Ikeja, in Lagos State. The convener, Chief Mike Wadiora, speaks on the essence of the visit. Women are the foundation of every society. And that's why we need to come and talk to you, because women bring life. You bring life, you, you nurture life. Doing the right thing is a signature program of Do the Right Thing for the Less Privileged and Youth Foundation. The campaign is poised to touch the fabrics of our morality and ensure the realignment of members of the society, of being good citizens, irrespective of who is watching. We are pleading with the conscience of every individual and also telling them many benefits of doing the right thing. It soon becomes an interactive session with questions from the market women and responses from members of the NGO. That sometimes when you want to do something, your conscience will tell you that what you are doing is not good. But when you look into our country these days, many things happen. People do wickedness. Does it mean that their conscience is dead? They will carry somebody, they will do wickedness to a little child, they will do wickedness to their neighbor, they will do what is not right. Does it mean that their conscience is dead? I want to know. Because they have desensitized themselves so much, because of not... Uh, doing the right thing at appropriate times. You find out that they keep pushing the button and pushing the button to the point where you see this wickedness show forth in places where, like, as you said, uh, like the house help uh, situations where you see people uh, doing, uh, holding public offices and then treating the citizens very, very badly. And that's because of they were not doing the right things at the times they needed to. So that's why we are encouraging everyone to listen to those conscience. Many people know that what they are doing is wrong, but they continue to do it. That's why we are appealing, and then we are getting everyone to be able to hear us. Doing the right thing pays. It pays in little ways and in big ways in our society. At the end, the Yalode of Aladi Market, 
Chief Mrs. Elizabeth Adenuga responds to the team. Today we are happy. All of us are happy because you are enlightening us and remember us that we can we, we do something at the right time and have our own conscience. You know, we have conscience, but we don't use it. But now, everybody, all the people that are here, they know that if you have conscience, you can do more. And you won't do what is not good when you have your own conscience. Plan. It's an encouraging program. Yes. I want to encourage you not to stop here. Because a lot of things is going on in this, our Nigeria. Wickedness everywhere. Please try and carry this program around everywhere so that people will know that it is good for them to do the right thing. Yes. And when you do the wrong thing, even if you don't repeat now, your generation, your children will repeat tomorrow. Thank you very much for choosing Alade Market for your campaign. And you have given us points why we should be right at any time. This, we will keep it up and do the same. Thank you very much. High point of the visit was the presentation of gift items to the traders. Nkiru Obuli reporting for Clairview Television. Nigerian's former Deputy Senate President and his wife appeared in the London court on Tuesday ahead of their trial for organ harvesting, but his accused daughter was unable to attend as she was in the hospital. His accused, along with his wife Beatrice's daughter, Sonia, and a doctor for bringing a 21-year-old man from Nigeria to have his kidney removed. She was unable to attend court as she is currently in the hospital in an unspecified condition. Her defense team have also submitted a psychological report claiming she is not fit to stand trial. The court adjourned soon after convening an order for prosecutors to read the report. Meanwhile, Ike Ekwerimadu had bailed as his bail plea rejected over concerns he might flee Britain. Obeta was also detained. Beatrice and Sonia Ekwerimadu are on conditional bail. If you're just joining us, you're watching the news on Clevy Television. And when we come back, we'll bring you stories on women and children. Stay with us. Welcome back. Today, Clevy News beams its spotlight on Major General Adori Kekali, the first woman to attain the rank of a Major General in the Nigerian Army. Aderonke Kale is a Nigerian Army psychiatrist who became the first female Major General in the history of the Nigerian Army. Aderonke Kale was born on 10th in February 1959 to parents of the Yoruba origin. Her father was a pharmacist and her mother a teacher. Kale went to primary school in Lagos and Zaria and she undertook her secondary education in St. Anne School, Ibadan and Abe Okuta Grammar School. She trained as a medical doctor at the University College, which later became the University of Ibadan. Kale then specialized in psychiatry at the University of London. She was inspired to join psychiatry by Professor Thomas Adeoye Lambo, Africa's first professor of psychiatry. She worked briefly in Britain and returned to Nigeria in 1971. A year later, in 1972, she joined the Nigerian Army. This was a very rare decision for women in those days, particularly those at such a high professional level. She was a colonel and deputy commander of the Nigerian Army Medical Corps by 1990. She was later promoted to the rank of Brigadier General, in doing so becoming the first female general in West Africa. Kale was promoted to Major General in 1994 and became the first Nigerian woman to achieve that rank. She was also the first female major general in West Africa. Her role was initially as chief psychiatrist to the army. Kale later became director of the entire Nigerian Medical Corps and was its chief medical officer until 1996. This was the first time in history of the Nigerian army that a woman was given the responsibility for the health care of all Nigerian soldiers at all levels in preparation for and during war. Kale had a son in 1975, known as Yemi Kale, who became Statistician General of Nigeria. 
She provided land for the founding of the Bodija Ashi Baptist Church in Ibadan. After a successful career in the Nigerian army, she retired in 1997. Clearview News celebrates Major General Aderonke Kale for successfully navigating the murky waters of a male-dominated profession, carving a name for herself and showing that indeed, what a man can do, a woman can do better. Gloria Atta, reporting for Clearview News. A total of 29 Nigerian referees will on Wednesday, February 1st, 2023, receive their badges to operate as FIFA match officials for the year 2023. They will be decorated at a special ceremony inside the NFF Secretariat at Moshu Abiola National Stadium in Abuja. According to a statement by NFF made available to Clevis Tony Idoi, a total of seven referees out of the 29 will be badged as FIFA referees while another seven will be decorated as FIFA assistant referees. Four will be badged as FIFA's women referees, while three are FIFA women assistant referees, just as four are beach soccer referees. And that's the news, but before we go, a recap of the top stories. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Umifili, has finally appeared before the House of Representatives, which summoned him over the confusion caused by the redesign of some Naira notes and the exchange of old notes with new notes. MFL is appearing before the ad hoc committee set up by the House of Representatives to investigate the crisis, which is charged by Majority Leader Alhassan Adodogua. Members of the Islamic State of West African Province, ISWAP, reportedly shared old notes with commuters in Borno State ahead of the Central Bank of Nigeria's cash test policies deadline. Members of the terrorist group were seen distributing money to passengers along the Meduguri Borno Highway in Guzamala local government area of Borno State. We also told you that the European Union has officially launched its observation mission ahead of the general elections. The chief observer of the European Union Election Observation Mission, Barry Andrews, highlighted its items, its aims and objectives as it calls on all parties involved to be peaceful during and after the elections. Remember to like us on Facebook television. Follow us on Twitter at Clevy Online. Follow us on Instagram at Clevy, T at Clevy News. And also remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Clevy TV. Thank you for watching. I am Florence Joshua.